Um, so we're going to go straight into it. I'm looking at John chapter 20, verse 19. Like Pastor Mike said, we are still in uh, Easter season uh, in, in the liturgical calendar. We usually just celebrate it one time and we good. But on the, on the church calendar, we, we celebrate Easter for, for, for a minute. And this is for us to really take in the meaning and the nuances of everything that Jesus did on this momentous occasion. So um, I just want to start off with this verse is John chapter 20, verse 19. And it says, that Sunday evening, somebody say Sunday evening. Sunday. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors. That's interesting. Meeting behind locked doors because why? They were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side, and they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Amen. When they saw the Lord, may God bless God's holy word. I want to talk to you today about Sunday evenings. I want to talk about Sunday evenings. Tell somebody Sunday evening. Tell the per person on your left Sunday evening. Person on your right Sunday evening. We're going to talk a little bit about Sunday evenings. And I'm, my mic is a little hot. I don't want to like blow y'all out, so maybe you just turn me down a little bit. Um, if I were to take a poll among working citizens in America or those who go to school, um, I would venture to say that Monday mornings are probably the least favorite time of the week. Can I get an amen? amen. Does anybody else feel that way? Something about Monday mornings. I don't care what you did, what you, it's just, that's the whole situation. I don't know if you're going to school or work. Monday mornings tend to be the least favorite time of the week, but I would also guess that Sunday evenings would come in a close second. Sunday evenings, I, I will dare to say. Something about Sunday evenings. How do you usually feel about a Sunday evening? Sunday evenings when that, that impending sense of dread begins to come upon you as you begin to think about all the things you need to do when you need to wake up and set your alarm. I have a lot of people who work in the school system and you are already starting to think about every little child you're going to have to deal with and you're thinking about that boss, you're thinking about that project. It's something about Sunday evenings and it feels like you just blinked your eye. And it's, and it's time to go back to work. Like, it was Friday, and now what happened? Somebody asked you, how's your weekend? You're like, I don't even know. What happened? I don't know. All I know is got to go to work tomorrow, right? Sunday evenings. How do you feel about Sunday evenings? Well, um, well in the case of the disciples, we often talk about Good Friday. We just came out of that season. Good Friday. And sometimes we kind of rush through Good Friday we rush through Silent Saturday. You know, we, Good Friday is a time we just got to sit in that thing, sit in that lament. And then we got Silent Saturday. It feels like nothing's going on. Anybody been in a Silent Saturday in their life? Feel like nothing's going on. Where's the promises of God? Where is God? Does God exist? That's that Silent Saturday. And then we rush to, to he got up morning. Oh, we love to shout, he got up. We love that. We love he got up morning. Oh, we celebrate Easter. We hug, we buck, we, we run a lap. We, we look cute in our Easter clothes. We celebrate the resurrection, but rarely do we talk about Sunday evening. Sunday evening. You see, here in this text, we see the disciples on Sunday evening were locked behind closed doors because of fear. This is Sunday evening. Y'all remember what happened Sunday morning, right? We already shouted on Sunday morning. Let's get, in John's account, Mary came. We remember all this. She saw the stone. The stone was rolled away. She went to go tell Peter and John, right? Y'all remember all this? They had a little track meet to the, to the tomb to see who gonna make it there. Peter goes in, sees Jesus' clothes neatly folded. Mary starts crying. She mistakes. She thinks she sees a gardener. It's really Jesus. 
But when Jesus spoke her name, that's when she realized who God was. How many glad that Jesus spoke your name one day? You ever had a time when Jesus spoke your name? Nothing else mattered until Jesus spoke your name? And then Mary went to tell the disciples. So this is where our passage picks up on Sunday evening. Everybody loves Sunday morning, but nobody want to talk about Sunday evening. Somebody say Sunday evening. See, Mary saw Jesus, but the disciples didn't. And when Mary gave her testimony, you know, in that culture, if a woman gave a testimony, it's like, uh, it's iffy. Like, can we really, is it credible? We don't really believe women. Women's testimonies can't even stand in court. Mary's saying, I've seen the Lord. I've, I'm, I'm literally telling you, I saw the Lord. And yet, on Sunday night, where did we find the disciples? Locked in a door, locked in a room full of fear. Even though someone has told them that there is a risen Lord. I mean, there's something about something. What do you think was going on in their heads? They probably had a lot of conspiracy theories. You know, we love conspiracy theories. They walked in, Peter trying to figure it out loud. His clothes is still here, but he not here. But the tomb, the stone was, it became a CSI, like, investigative thing. Like, they had, like, who rolled the stone away? Like, it's all, it makes no sense. We can't believe the ladies. They tripping. They, they not all in their emotions. They didn't see Jesus. They imagining things. They automatically knew that they were incriminated. They already knew, like, they gonna be looking for us. Like, if the block is hot right now. Like, if they own us, like, man, they think we with them? Like, oh, that, why do you think Peter was denying the Lord when the little girl was like, ooh, you with him? She like, no, nah, ain't, that ain't me, that ain't me, that ain't me. You got the wrong person. They didn't want to be incriminated. And I ain't with him. Mm, we keep that on the low, right? They was, they was operating with hood rules at this time. What if they were next? They already crucified Jesus. I mean, they did him in. They, ooh, they told Jesus up. They like, what if they gonna do the same for us? What if there's 12 crosses waiting for us outside, locked in a room? And I want y'all to remember, y'all walk back in memory lane with me. Remember, these was the same ones that said they was down with the revolution. Y'all remember that? They the ones like, like, Jesus, we'll follow you wherever you go. What we doing, overthrowing Rome? Let's go, we with it. Where are we? Were they with it? At the, the same people who was ready for the revolution is now locked behind closed doors in a room. I thought y'all was ready for this life. They weren't ready for the life. Okay, they weren't ready for revolution. So my question is to you, what do you do when fear keeps you locked up? Anybody ever been there before? How many people have been there before? You ever been locked in fear? You ever been paralyzed? You ever been in a place where you couldn't move? You couldn't make the next step? You couldn't get enough courage to do it? You had some, you had a business plan, you had an idea, but you just couldn't muster up the courage, fear. Anybody know what it feels like to be locked up by fear? I hope I'm not alone. I feel like I got a few witnesses in here with me to say that it's a real thing. I can't put one foot in front of the other. People are saying they believe in me, but I feel like I have imposter syndrome. I, I want to do it, but I'm just, I'm scared. What if? What will they say? What would they do? What if my family walks out on me? What if? What if? It's the what ifs that get us in life, right? Can you imagine all the what ifs that, how many what ifs have really come true? I want you to do an inventory. Like most of the what ifs are made up. I'm just throwing that in for free. What keeps you locked up? So in our story, something amazing happens. We, we all kind of know the story, but I want to go a little deeper into it. In verse 19, it says, suddenly, suddenly Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. And then he started showing them his hands and his wounds. I love this about Jesus. And it's good news for us that Jesus appears through locked doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Come on, Jesus. Jesus makes appearances. Yeah, that's clap worthy. Jesus makes appearances in locked doors. I want you to think about every locked door in your mind. See, a lot of we pray every Sunday for our, our incarcerated brothers and sisters, and we love y'all. And, you know, it's some of us who are free in our bodies but still locked in our minds, in our emotions. And that's good news for us. This passage is good news for us. You telling me that Jesus, Sister Sheila, that Jesus appears through locked doors? Jesus makes appearances in places I thought I had locked him out of? That Jesus will make an appearance and then show up in my deepest hurt when I'm paralyzed, when I don't know what to do? Are you telling me this is the kind of God that I serve? Come on. He comes through. And then look, he don't even just, he didn't just come through. He came through and he speaks peace. Hallelujah. Woo. Not only does Jesus appear in locked doors, in locked hearts, in locked situations, Jesus will also speak peace to it. Come on, how many people need peace spoken to their mind? Peace spoken to your heart. Peace spoken into that situation. This is what Jesus is offering. What a mighty God we serve. He speaks peace. He's like, oh, I know y'all in here tripping. I know y'all, y'all in here scared, scared to death. And he just come in here embracing. He like, hey, peace is good. You good? You good? It's me. It's peace. He speaks peace into their hearts. And this is such good news for us. How many, how many need that peace of God? Could you just lift your hand and just receive? God, speak peace into my heart. Speak peace. Lock, come in my locked door, oh God. With the key to both, get it. But God, Jesus needs some bolt cutters in some of, some of our hearts in our lives. Do it, Jesus. He speaks peace. Now, at this point, this should be the end of the story. It should be a happily ever laughter. Jesus died. He rose again. He made appearance. The end. Right? It's like ever happy ever after. This is what it should be. But in this story, we kind of get a, a plot twist. Somebody say plot twist. A little plot twist happens, and it happens in verse 24. Check it out. Verse 24 says, one of the disciples, Thomas, my son's name. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> one of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed twin. You know, we, you know, this is, I feel like this is a black person. You ever, black people, when we know twins, do we ever call them their name? No, we call them twin. Hey, twin. I don't know, maybe that's just, anybody a twin in here? A twin online? Okay, good. If that was your, if that was you, th your name is twin. We don't call you by your name, we call you twin. Side note, I'm back. All right. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. I won't believe it. I'm telling you the three things that I need, and I will not believe it unless it happens. This time, I, I love this. This is a very interesting part of the story, a very interesting plot, plot twist, because Thomas missed it. I'm like, this is the ultimate FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. Like, Thomas, he missed it. Like, bro, where were you? Like, you won't believe what happened. And I love Thomas, but I think Thomas gets a bad rap. Thomas gets a bad rap. What do we always call Thomas? Doubt and Thomas. Poor little thing. He go down in history. Think he go into history as Doubt and Thomas. Can you believe that? I don't think that should be his name. I think he could be more like skeptical Thomas. That's a, it fits a little better. Or even honest Thomas. Could he be honest, Thomas? He should be honest, Thomas, Tommy. <laughs> honest, Thomas. I love Thomas. You y'all forget y'all done named him Doubt and Thomas. Y'all forgot his history. Y'all forgot Thomas Sharon. Thomas was riding with him. Thomas was with him. Thomas, first of all, left his twin to follow Jesus. Y'all forget like he could have been like me. We we close. He 
um, gave up his life to follow Jesus. He was with the crew. He was there. He was every miracle, every fish, every loaf. Thomas was there. And I love Thomas. If you go back in most of John's account, this is why I think he should be honest, Thomas. He, he was willing to die with Jesus. There was one time when Jesus went to go raise Lazarus, and they like, hey, you know the block is hot. They looking for you. And they was like, Jesus like, we going. And Thomas was like, well, let us go and die with him. It's there. John 11, read it for yourself. You're like, well, let's go die with him because that's what he just bent on. He just bent on doing the dangerous things. He was willing to die with Jesus. Y'all got to read John 14 on your spare time. Jesus, Jesus was there, you know, that, that famous funeral, like, I go to prepare a place for you, and, and where I am, you may be also. And in this thing, Jesus was like, and where I go, you, I, you know the way, you know where I'm going. Like, Jesus was talking all myster- mysterious. Please read it for yourself. The Bible's comedy. Thomas straight up says, um, Jesus, we don't know where you're going. Show us the way. Just show us the way, Jesus. We don't know what you're talking about. We have no clue what is happening right now. Show us the way. I love Thomas. Honest Thomas. He's here. And you know what he probably figured out? He probably figured there is no way. There is literally, I saw this man die. There is no way. I saw him beaten to death, scourged, purged wounded stabbed he didn't even look recognizable there there is no way that this man is alive not what they did to him not that he was this hump this just lump of flesh on a cross there's no way he's like i just can't do it i can't do it there's no way i don't care what i don't know what y'all on i don't know what y'all was doing while i was gone i don't know who brought in a bottle or something i i can't do it I don't want no parts. That's what he said. I don't know what y'all partaking in, but I don't want it. <laughs> but I want to pose a question to you, and this will, this will help us. Do you think this was doubt, or do you think this was hurt and disappointment? Mm. Which one? Because we quit to make him, be, oh, you said that you're just doubting. Wait, wait, wait. It, feel, it sounds a little more, I don't know, we got therapists in the room. It feels a little more like hurt and disappointment. Like, I won't believe because I'm not going through that hurt again. I gave up everything to follow this man. Are you kidding me? I did it all. I I left my family. And this is how it ends? Oh, no. I, I, I uh, uh, I can't open myself up to that kind of hope. Anybody been there before? I can't. I can't even let myself imagine because... I can't, I, can't, I can't experience that kind of pain. Another disappointment would devastate me. It'll take me out. I'm not emotionally able to, I don't have the capacity, the emotional capacity to go through another one of these. This was the ultimate. The person you put all your faith and trust and hope, Robert, he died. Can you imagine the guy? I said he was the Messiah. My family, my friends told me, you, you crazy. Why are you following? No, I'm telling you, he the truth. He the real thing. Y'all better get on it. While we, y'all better come on, follow us. It's humil- it was embarrassing. It was a, at this point, I'm not going to do it. He was like, I can't do it. Unless I see it for myself. I'm not taking y'all's word for it. I'm not taking. Is that a bad the- theology? Is that actually a bad? Should we just take people's word for it, Lord? Should we just be like, God is a good God? Oh, I heard he's a good God. Well, yes, he is. <laughs> should we just take people's word? Or should you see it for yourself? Should you encounter God for yourself? What do you do with the Sunday evenings of your life when you hear good news, but it's it doesn't feel like it applies to you because of fear and disappointment. I heard God could, you know, take this pain away. Okay, that's, that sounds cool in theory. I heard God can give peace to this anxiety that I'm feeling. Okay, that might work for some people. Some people got a good life. They find their partner and they just live it. You know, it must, must be nice. What's that meme? It must be nice. <laughs> I can't, Lord. I'm not going to look at you no more. All right. 
what do you do when you don't feel like it applies to you? Because if I believe that, I'm going to open myself up to hope, and then I'm going to open myself to disappointment, and I can't be disappointed. A lot of us can't even really believe in God like we want to, like we used to, because I felt let down by God. Now, we being really honest, you know, I'm not, not going to have you raise your hand on that. I'll close my eyes. How many people ever felt like that? <laughs> Man, like, to be honest, like, God, I can't, like... I really pray for X, Y, and Z. You did not come through. And um, yeah, I can't believe in you like that. Fear, disappointment. This is what Sunday evening feels like. When, when I heard there's good news, Jesus could be risen. Moni, he might be there. I don't know. I didn't see it. Doesn't apply to me. So what should we do? If you feel like you're on a Sunday evening. If you are in a Sunday evening season, I want to encourage you to look for a surprise appearance by Jesus. Just watch, just wait for it. Just wait for it. It's coming. Pastor Mike always pre he preaches this wonderful word about being open to surprise, letting our imagination, our holy imagination be open. Be open to be surprised by it. We got our, our lives so rigid and structured and planned that we don't even make room for Jesus to surprise us. Like, make room for an, a surprise appearance by Jesus. There, we got to be like, God, even through my locked doors, <laughs> even in my disappointments, I know that you're able to come through. Every Jesus walked through locked doors. So God, walk through that disappointment in my life. Appear, Jesus, and speak peace. Speak peace when you come, God. We need it. You know, some people that we're praying for, they're not really going to believe unless they experience God for themselves. How many people you're praying for somebody? You're like, Lord, save them. Lord, keep them. Lord, Lord, please, just do a work in their heart. Like, please. But you know, the people in this good, we gotta keep praying for them. But they, they, there's some people like Honest Thomas. Unless I experience God for myself. So that's why we gotta keep praying for encounters. Mm. That God will walk through their locked doors. Mm. Now look, this is the last verse and we out your way and we gonna baptize the saints in Jesus name. In verse um, 26, I want you to check out the time gap. Verse 26 says, eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, my brother Thomas was with him. Right? Now I want you to stay, I'm gonna stay right there real quick. Eight days later, eight days later. Somebody say eight days later. Eight days later. Jesus let Thomas sit in this tension, Madeline, for eight days. Eight days. The same God that just walked through a wall and was like, here I am, y'all. Let Thomas sit for eight days. Intention. And like, is it or is it not? Is it, is it? Are they lying? Is it real? Come on. What is God letting you sit through right now? Do you feel tension in your life? Are you feeling like, God, where, where are you? Like, really, where are you? God's lit, God, Jesus let Jesus could have easily did a return trip and be like, I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> he let this boy sit in this for eight days. So don't mistake the waiting for abandonment. Mm. It was a moment. He wanted him to sit in that thing. He wanted him to feel this thing. Because he knew this next verse was coming. In verse 26, eight days later, the disciples were together. And this time, Thomas made sure he was in the crew. The doors were locked. Feels a little deja vu-ish. The doors were locked. But suddenly, Jesus was standing among them. What did he say again? Peace be with you. And, and he said, and 27. Then he said to Thomas, he looked at my boy Thomas, turned right to him. Thomas, put your finger right here. Look at my hands. 
Now, come on, come on, put your wound, put your hands in the wound in my side. Hey, bruh, don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Woo! Believe. He did this just for Thomas. He, he, let him, he let him do the whole experience over. It was like a redo. And this is good news for us that think we, mess, we missed out on stuff. We think we missed our moment. We think we missed time and opportunity. Our, our best days are behind us. And I missed that. I missed it, man. Do you see that Jesus did? He did a whole replay just for Thomas, he suddenly appeared again. He spoke peace again. He showed him his scars. A whole experience was did again just for Thomas. Jesus wants to do the same thing for us. He shows them the scars. Now, and then we're going to move on from this. But y'all got to trip on this. He show, this is resurrected Jesus, right? He died, rose again. This is Jesus with his new glorified body. The same body that we're going to hope to have. Jesus is the firstborn of the resurrected one. When we believe in Jesus, we'll, we will too have a resurrected body. Y'all believe that? Yes. Look what Jesus did. This is why I adore Jesus. He chose the scars, y'all. When he had a new body, Mama Loretta, when he got a new body, he could erase the scars. Be like, I'm brand new. That was old school. I don't, you know, I, y'all don't need to see all that. For he will be the only one. He will be the only scarred person in eternity. He will be the only one. When when we walking around with our new glorified bodies, like the one we like working and we trying to eat right, and we like we ain't got to do nothing. We gonna be where we want to be in heaven. Yee! (laughs) Calories won't be an issue. Y'all gonna have six packs and abs and be like, oh girl, look at you! I see you. We're going to be what we want to look like. But Jesus kept the scars. It's a perpetual, perpetual reminder of the price paid for redemption. Y'all, he kept the scars. He, kept, he chose to stay a human for all eternity. Can y'all wrap your head around this? Jesus, God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit truth. Jesus came down in human form to take on our likeness, to pay our price. And he could have been like, okay, I'm going back as a spirit. He chose to stay a human and a scarred human for us. This is why I love Jesus. Oh, my God. So what happens when you have a personal encounter with Jesus? Verse 28, Thomas, my guy Thomas. He says, my Lord and my God. That's all he could say. My Lord and my God. First declaration in the new covenant where someone calls Jesus God. Did Jesus say, oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't call me that. You're doing too far. No, Jesus was like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got it. You're right. My Lord and my God. This is a major key for us. This is a major key for us. This is, this is what happens when you have an encounter with God. You, you, you say, you are my Lord. I'm going to follow you. you. You running things. You the boss. I'm following you. You are my Lord and you are my God. Verse 29, and I'm done. Verse 29 says, told him. You guys see verse 29? Yeah. Thank you, Brother Mike. Jesus told him. Look, look. Check this out. You believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. You ever wanted to know if you were in the Bible? You ever, you could tell somebody like, did you know I was was in the Bible? I'm literally in the Bible. This is your verse. Look at you are, you are in the Bible. It says, you believe Thomas because you saw me, but blessed are those who believe without seeing me. That's us. We made the Bible, y'all. We up in there. This is a major key to getting through our Sunday evenings. The Sunday evenings in life. Will you believe even when you don't see it? Because you know that's, it's not faith if you can see it. That's what I'm trying. Do y'all know that? You can't like, I can't be like, since Sheila has this beautiful purse, 
like, oh my gosh, I hope I get a purse. I hope I get a purse. I hope I, hope I get a guest purse with a cute pom-pom. Like this is, it takes no faith to believe for this because I can see it. Faith is seeing what, believing what you can't see is literally the definition of faith. Will you trust God? Will you trust the plan? Will you trust the process? This is what the disciples had to wrestle with with Sunday evening. Everything Jesus said, everything he's promised you, everything the Lord has spoken to your life, will you trust it? Even when you don't see the whole picture. Will you trust the little piece that's right in front of you? Will you just say, God, I believe you. You're my Lord. You're my God. I believe you even when I can't see it. This is how we get to the next morning. Weeping endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. So let's just all stand. We're just going to close in prayer. And we can have the brothers who are getting ready for um, going to help us with baptism. Just start stretching your muscles. This closing prayer is for all the people who are currently experiencing a Sunday evening. You've heard that there's good news. You've heard that Jesus is alive. You've heard that resurrection power is available to your life. But it's hard to believe it because of fear and disappointment. The good news today is that Jesus wants to appear behind your locked wall and speak peace to your situation. So God, I pray over every heart who is hearing this message. And God, if it resonates in their heart, God, I pray that you would do a work in their lives if this pertains to you can you just lift your hands and receive this prayer so god i pray over every person who's watching online and who is in the building whose hands are raised who are experiencing a time of not doubt not skeptical not being skeptical skeptical but they are experiencing triggers of trauma of hurt or disappointment God, they're being honest. They're trying, crying out to you. It's Sunday, it's, it's Sunday evening. It feels hard. But God, I just thank you that they're going to experience a new encounter with you in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would encounter each person whose hand is lifted, whose heart is yielded to you. God, I pray that you would encounter them in a new way. God, you would appear behind every lock wall. And I just see Jesus walking through our hearts and our minds with a key and just opening every lock and just walking through and appearing through everything that's been so hard. God, will you just do a special work to all those who are receiving this word? God, I thank you. Thank you for your peace. Thank you, God, that we will believe you even when we can't see it. God, that we will trust you in the process. The disciples didn't see the whole process, but we want to trust you even when we can't see it, when we can't figure it out, when it looks like you've abandoned us. God, when it looks like the situation is dead, God, we want to trust you even the more. Give us the grace to believe you, God. We thank you for new encounters in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. If that's you, won't you just put your hands together?